Alan, it'll be a very different Remembrance Weekend for the, for the whole country, but also for the Aberdeen Heritage Trust. Yes, uh, Mal. Um, we would normally have over 100 people here on Saturday morning, uh, school representatives, college, universities, military associations, the Royal British Legion, uh, and we have a service, a, uh, an armistice service, lasting about 40 minutes. So sadly, it will not happen this year, but I will be here on Saturday morning with one or two of the club employees who will actually be in the building, and I will come along to the memorial at 11 o'clock. And it's become a very important part of the, the Heritage Trust calendar, hasn't it? Indeed. It's the, probably the biggest event of the year for us. Um, we get uh, lots of people asking prior to the event, when is it happening? And during the year, we have uh, representatives of schools coming here, looking at the memorial, doing some history research, and even one or two going to France and Flanders and looking at the graves of our former players and laying wreaths. You see the list of names of players and staff who, who went and you know, lost their lives during the war. We just see names, but behind each one are some incredible stories, isn't there? Absolutely. Um, we've got First World War, Second World War. Uh, we've got players, and also remember a very famous member of staff who was killed in World War I, our club doctor. He's been featured a number of times uh, in research projects. Uh, he actually contributed to a trench stretcher. Uh, and we discovered that by looking at the history uh, of particular battles. Uh, and this was found in the Welcome Trust website. But uh, what's incredible, I uh, look back at the First World War in particular, was the fact that the team carried on. They still had games to play as well, had, didn't they? Yes, th there had been games. There was controversy at the beginning of the war about whether there should be games, um, heated arguments. Uh, we actually, um, and this is really my inspiration, learned about World War I and football with Heart of Midlothian. Maybe we shouldn't be saying too much about one of our rivals, but you know, they have a great tradition. And when I was a boy, uh, my father took me to the Haymarket to see the memorial there. And three years ago, I was invited to attend their ceremony and I laid a Heritage Trust wreath. So uh, looking at history and football, uh, wartime, uh, my inspiration really began in the, in the 19, late 1950s, early 60s. But Alan, this year there's some, some very notable uh, anniversaries, isn't there? Yeah. Um, sadly, we haven't been able to really commemorate these. Um, we've got VE, Victory in Europe, uh, 75 years. We've got Victory in Japan, 75 years. And we've got 80 years of uh, the Battle of Britain, Dunkirk, and St. Valery en Coe. And Alan, just finally, the, obviously see the players tonight will have the, the poppies on the shirt, which Jim Warrender, our, our kit man, does. And then Jim gives you a shirt as well. Indeed, indeed. Uh, we actually work with Poppy Scotland and we, we give them a shirt. That's, they get a signed shirt with all the players' names on it. Uh, the Heritage Trust, uh, we also acquire a shirt uh, from the game but prior to the game, we have a shirt from the kit room for our memorial. And to the shirt that we have this year uh, is commemorating, of course, the VE and VJ 75 years. Uh, and it was signed by Derek McInnes. And that frame shirt will go up and join the others.